we say, bless your heart. When we say that in the South, if we come up and compliment your hat and say, well, well, that, that's a nice hat, bless your heart. That did not mean we liked your hat. We think your hat's goofy looking. Amen? You know what I'm saying? Well, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice, 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 nice haircut you got there. Bless your heart. Amen. Yeah, bless your heart something you can say. It sort of gets you off the hook you know, a little bit, you know. So, in a little series called Bless Your Heart, you can actually bless your heart. You yourself can bless your heart. If anybody's going to take care of you, it's going to need to be you. Okay? A lot of times in relationship, and here it is, Valentine's Week and all that kind of stuff. Amen? A lot of times in relationship, we actually, oh, my God, I just love this person so much. And oh, Without you, I can't breathe. And all this. Listen to me. Listen to me. And we just give them everything. Oh, my life, my everything. And we think that's what we're supposed to do. And then one day they just don't like us anymore. They don't want to be with us anymore. And you're just screwed. You're messed up, baby. Pardon my language. That's life's life. The Bible says keep your heart. We're out of the issues of life. Okay? If anybody's really going to take care of you, how many, can I just see a show of hands, you've realized that in your life, that, that you really have to take care of you. Can I see your hand? There you go. Now let's do another little hand show. And how many says, it, Pastor, it was not easy for me to understand that and to deal with that. What I'm talking about is real life here. Now we're not just talking about relationships. Okay? But I want to talk about it today from the Bible. If you'll take your Bible sometime and you look through your Bible at the word heart, 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 you'll be surprised. Your Bible is full of stuff about your heart. So over the next two weeks, maybe three, we're going to have a little series called Bless Your Heart. We wonder how we do our series. I take the Bible. Staff a lot of times gets with me and we get a topic, a theme, something that we think would be good to talk about or something from my heart or my life that I've experienced in my own life. And I search the Scriptures on it. And we try to put together a message. Amen? That's how we do it in a series. Then Roger helps us. He does the graphics. He takes it. You can have everything we see. you'll see today on the screen. You can go home with your own time, your computer, your cell phone, and you can do exactly what we're doing today and download it and be encouraged. Let's go with the message today. Here we go. Bless your heart. Can you say it? One, two, three. Are you all setting up ready? Yes or no? If somebody's slouching, bless somebody's heart with a pop-up side head next to them. But bless your heart. Hey, man, here we go. Come on, let's roll, Tide. Who's from Alabama? I met the Alabama couple. Where y'all at? They love that roll, Tide stuff. Amen. Come on, here we go. Was I right about the bless your heart thing? Oh, yeah, there we go. Today's message, my heart is my responsibility. By the way, this is something I learned within the last two years. What I'm sharing with you today is not something... I did for almost 49 years of my life. My heart is my responsibility. If Gary's going to get taken care of, Gary better take care of Gary. Amen? Say. And it's like health, too. If you don't want to have to take care of your health, somebody can nag you all day long about it, but if you don't want to do it, you're just going to die early. You've got to take care of you. Is that true? Yes or no? Sure it is. It's that way with your heart. Let's talk about it. My heart's my responsibility. Here's this verse I've quoted to you two or three times already. Say it with me, please. Keep your heart with all, for out of it are the... I've been leaving a little part out with all diligence. Keep your heart with what? Sounds like God's saying, wow, you better get on this thing. You better work on it. It better be important to you. Because every issue out of life you're going to face is going to come right through your heart. Keep looking. My heart is mine. It's my responsibility to keep my heart. It's going to roll. Just some things I wrote down. To take care of my heart 
It's my responsibility to believe this, to believe that I have to do it. It's my responsibility. You've got to believe that first. I have to take care of me. I have to take care of my heart. Keep looking. We're rolling. Come on. Might be slow, right? I'm sorry. Here we go. My heart is the innermost center of who I am. Just trying to give you an idea of where's this series going, Pastor. Well, I'm going to take you there. My heart is the innermost center of who I am. It's the center of bodily, physical life. Now, we know that. Can you live without a heart? Yes or no? No. It's going to pump your blood. It's going to make things happen. You can't live. It's the center of bodily, physical life. So I'm not going to spend three weeks, two weeks talking about that. Go see a doctor. Here's the part I'm interested in. It's the center of my rational, emotional, and spiritual life. Would you say that with me? It's the center of my rational, emotional, and spiritual life. That's the part I want to talk about. That's where I can come in. And I can help with the Word of God. Amen? Your thoughts, your emotions, and your spirit flow from your heart. Okay? Let's keep looking. We're just, just, just talking here a little bit. Out of the heart flows what? Can we say that a little louder? Y'all sleeping on me? Y'all cold? Come on, here we go. Out of the heart flows what? Everything. The physical heart pumps blood. The rational, emotional, and spiritual heart pumps me. Could you say that with me? Back it up. Come on. The physical heart pumps blood. Help me now. The rational, emotional, and spiritual heart pumps me. Boy, I need to talk about that then, don't I? If that's the thing that pumps old Gary and it pumps you, we better talk about it. But as you know, for years in church, even my own preaching, I never talked about it. Never thought about it. Okay? Let's talk about it. My heart is my responsibility, rationally, emotionally, and spiritually. I've got to take care of me. My heart's the center of thought. Let's break it down. Don't get too bored with me here. We're going to get somewhere if you hang in here. My heart's the th center of thought. Not just a brain. Okay, there's something going on inside of you. You ever been thinking something that just made you sick? Say Start dwelling on something that just made you sick. Say. Made you stressed, kept you up. You ever had things happen like that? My heart's the center of thoughts. That's ideas and concepts. The heart presumes. The heart purposes. The heart understands. The heart deliberates. The heart estimates. The heart can what? Reflect. It's more than just a machine, like a little brain, like a little computer. Now, whatever's happening, you're feeling it. You understand? Something can happen and just the thought of that thing can come back up and cause you pain. Or that thing that happened, you can come back up and make you smile or laugh. You understand? The heart, that's what we're talking about. The heart's the center of love and hate. I don't have any little bullet points down here because that's plain English. You can love somebody in your heart, and you can hate somebody in your heart. You can have hate for somebody deep down inside of you. The Bible talks about a root of bitterness can grow up inside of you and defile many. What's it talking about? That hate gets down inside of your heart. You understand? See the difference between the thing that pumps blood and the thing that pumps you? The heart. The heart's the center of emotion. Feeling and affection. Now, we know that, don't we? Have we felt that? Say. Oh, we know what that feels like. Feeling and affection. Feelings of joy. Of pain. Of approval. Wait a minute. Of disapproval. Of hope. Wait. Of despair. Of security. Of, <laughs> of fear. Have you felt that? Yes or no? That's your heart. That's not just your brain. Y'all, y'all, I lost you today. You feel like you're a psycho guy. Amen. It's Valentine's. We make the little hearts. We give little Valentine hearts away. I love you with all my heart. We don't even know what we're saying. We ought to talk about it. I think Valentine's week is a good week to talk about it. Your heart. What is all that about? 
My heart's the center of my spirit. So rationally, emotionally, and spiritually. We're just breaking it down real fast. That's where I can love God with my heart. The Bible says, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your what? Heart that God raised Him from the dead and you'll be saved. We're to love the Lord our God with all our what? Heart, soul, and mind. So you can love God in your heart. That's where you love God. Not just with this little brain thing. But deep down inside of you, who you are can love God. You can respect God. Not just a do or don't list that you have in your brain. Do it, don't, do it, don't, do it, don't, do it, don't. No. You can actually do or don't out of respect. That's a little bit different than just keeping a list. You understand what I just said? There's that feeling of respect. You hear me or not? You, that's where you can reject God. Where are you rejecting Him? I just don't believe there's a God. I don't believe there's a God. You're rejecting Him deeper than that. It's in your heart. And out of your heart flows everything. And so when you reject God, He's not flowing. He's not moving in your life. There's no existence of God in your life. What a life to live without Him. That's why we need to reach people. People need to experience God in their emotions, in their spirit. In their thinking. Do you think that's a good thing? Yes or no? It's an awesome thing, guys. Here you are. The heart is the laboratory. And place where all that is good and evil and thoughts, words, and deeds come to life. Remember Frankenstein? Yeah. Listen, that's your life. It's where you come to life in your heart. How many have absolutely felt like you were killed in your heart. Like you died. I'm not talking about physically. But in your thinking, in your emotions, in your spirit, you were flat run over by a truck. Amen? Say. This is where it all happens, guys. Your heart. We ought to talk about it. Good and evil is going to come from your heart. By the way, mercy or judgment of others is going to come from your heart. If you give someone mercy or show somebody mercy in your world that's hurt you, it's not just going to come from the brain as a decision. It's going to come from something deeper inside of you that allows you to do that. You understand? Your heart. Love or hate is going to come from where? Your heart. That's what we're talking about. Been making the case just for a couple of minutes to get us going. This is really important, guys. The heart... Say it with me, is the what? Very center of who I am. I mean, it's even located right here, isn't it? Okay? This is that pumping heart right here. But it seems like what I'm talking about is it, it, it's, it's between your brain and right in here. How many of you have you just been just, you just, you've, you just can't, I mean, you've been so messed up that it, something was happening in your stomach. You had that happen? Say. And it wasn't because you ate something. Because something happened to you. You understand? How many have had that, that feeling? you got just, just this, this stinking feeling. It's just some kind of feeling in your what? In your gut. I'm just feeling something. You ever felt like that or not? Say. You understand? That's what we're talking about. This heart thing is the center of who you are. The heart is the very health of all the issues of life. You'd be surprised. Now, I'm talking to many people who have already done this and you've succeeded at it better than I have. But if you have a healthy heart, you can go through anything. Did you know that? Say, if you're taking care of you and you know how to take care of you, regardless of the train that runs over you, you can st keep on trucking. You can get back up. You can still smile. My pe people were amazed at my mother who was abused for years. We didn't know the abuse my mother suffered because my mother smiled. My mother was a champion. She was brave. She was true. She loved people. We didn't know she'd go home. I was married later on in life. Mother go home, be beat. Ultimately, she was shot six times and killed. Horrible situation. Certainly, I think no woman should endure anything like that at all, period. But the bottom line is, there's something 
there's something about taking care of your heart and taking care of you that can actually, you can become a crazy champion. You understand? Amen? Keep looking. The heart is more than a machine that just pumps. That's what I'm trying to make clear. It's the center of who I am. Say this with me. It's the what? It's the first responder of all. It's the first responder of all. I, now, if you're going to sleep, would you shake your head? I know this, especially guys. I'm always talking about her heart. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm trying to help you up here. I guess life's just a cakewalk for you. You can go to sleep on me. Wait till your heart's breaking. You wish you'd listen to me. You understand? Yes or no? You ought to kick yourself in the tail right now is what you ought to do. This is important. Or you're young. You're young and life's hot there. Yeah, you're going to get old. And you let this word get in you and it might be in you when you need it. Okay? The heart is the first responder of all of life's issues. Something happens to you and, and, and you're affected by it. It's the first thing that happens. And if you don't learn to take care of you, you're going to jump every time something happens, and you're just going to be a crazy person. You've got to be able to know your heart. Deal with it. I better take care of my heart. I better take care of my heart. Are you listening? That's what we're talking about. My heart is my responsibility. Now let's go to some Scripture. Okay? I just want to talk some Scripture with you. Listen to Jesus. You might say, Clark, you're just rambling up there. Hard, 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 hard. Well, you ought to heard Jesus talk. You would have really thought he was rambling. He talked about it all the time. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The thing you're focusing on, okay, Thing that you're spending on or you're thinking about is probably what you're going to dump some fun, funds in and time in. Okay? What's happening on inside of you? It's going to drive you. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil what? Treasure of his heart brings forth what? Evil things. So you mean I can think evil in my heart and I can store up evil in my heart and because of that evil is going to come out? Exactly. And a lot of times, it's not just a brain decision. It's a life decision. Your heart is the first responder. And so now you put this evil treasure in here, and you wonder, well, I don't understand why I'm doing these things. It's because that's who you are. You understand? And you need help. And God can help you. But you have to help you if you want to be changed. You understand? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the what? And they defile who? The man. You can say you're sorry till the cows come home. But you keep saying it out of your mouth. And the problem is you're saying it out of your mouth and we know it's coming from your heart. But you're trying to be all spiritual on us. But the fact of the matter is what's coming out of your mouth is who you are. That's hard preaching, ain't it? And so often that stuff just spews out and we think we can fix it with, Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. And we think that's going to fix it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Say. Hello? Anybody awake out here? For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not what? Doubt in his, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he. I'm going to tell you something, not to brag on me. How many ever heard me ever say, I'm praying, I'm asking you to pray that God will bless me. Say the word. Double. Remember me saying that? Why did I do that? Well, because I watched Job go through his problems and Job got a double blessing. I watched in the Word of God that God wants to bless me. In my pain and when I was hurting so desperately, I had to speak to my heart. I had to get you to help me. 
help me get to double. But I had to speak double. I had to see double. And guess where Gary's at now? Double! Ah! Yeah! And the funny thing is, I think I'm just stepping into double. I think if double's right here, I'm just on the edge of double. And I can't wait to go, oh my God, I'm in the middle of double. A little crazy for you today, maybe. But if you know pain, you, you're probably hearing me very clearly today. Amen? Don't doubt in your heart. But how can I not doubt in my heart when I haven't been taught to have faith in my heart? When I'm just responding, my heart's just responding. It's just responding to whoever I'm with or the pain I'm going through. And I just, I'm in a pattern and I don't know how to get out of it. Well, that's where God comes in. That's where it words, His Word comes in. I'll hide my God's Word in my heart. Amen? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. See how that happens? Lord, Your, your Word's a lamp unto my feet, and it's a, a light unto my path because my heart is it, not working right. It's got to have some help here. You understand? So he talked about this all the time. You're to love the Lord with your heart, with the understanding, with all your soul, with, with all your strength. You're to love your neighbor as yourself. It's more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. So we love with our heart. Let not your what? Heart be what? You believe in God, Jesus says. Believe in me. His disciples, they were troubled. He would say things to them. They wouldn't get it that he was going to go to Jerusalem. He would be, he would be tried. He would be crucified. They didn't understand. You're leaving us? Don't let your heart be troubled. You understand? Because your heart can be troubled. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world can give, give I unto you. Let not your what? Heart be troubled, neither let it be what? Afraid. Did you know you can have problems? You can go through struggles. You can even live alone and not be afraid. There's a way to take care of your heart, to believe in your heart, to have faith in your heart, to talk to your heart, to take care of your heart, that no matter what happens in your life, it doesn't mean that you're not going to hurt, that you're not going to have pain, but you're going to make it. And you're not going to make it by the skin of your teeth. You're going to make it as a shining example, as a bright light, and God can use you. You understand? And you might even get to the place where you thank God for the pain and for the struggle because it got you to take care of you. How many would say that's true, Pastor? There you go. Come on. So that's Jesus. Let's listen to some other scriptures. You can have a dark heart. You better take care of your heart. Why? Why? Look at just what the Bible says. Because it, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. So they became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was what? darkened. You just let that mind do. And you don't take care of your heart. Don't be surprised if you don't have a very dark heart. You can have a blind heart. Oh my gosh. This is like where most of the world lives on this. One. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the what? Blindness of their heart. People are screwed up and don't even know they're screwed up. People are making bad decisions, getting hurt and hurting others and not even knowing what they're doing. That's coming from their heart. You understand? Just talking. You can have a condemning heart. You feel so down and so depressed. How many have ever felt like I'm worth nothing? You've done that in your life in the past. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm worth nothing. I'm a nothing. One night I woke up in my pain, I told you. And I woke up literally in the middle of the night and I said to myself, no one cares for me. I sat right up in my, in my bed alone. I just, no one cares for me. And then I responded with the word. That's a lie! That's a lie! Just talking to yourself. 
You have to do that. And then I started naming Elise and Mitch, and I named you guys, and I started naming a list. Because we can let one person or situation absolutely take over the thinking of our mind and our heart, and that's why people kill themselves. So you might think, Pastor, what are you talking about? You all messed up on that heart crazy stuff. I think when people take a gun and want to kill themselves, there's something we ought to talk about. I'm telling you, this, this, I, even when you're young, guys, you can have a heart that's hurting and a heart that's heavy. Amen? It's what we're talking about. A condemning heart. Hey, but you can have a true heart. Let us draw near with a what? A true heart. In full assurance of what? Faith. Having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You can have a true heart. Your heart, I mean, you can start to know your heart and talk to your heart. You can start to say to your heart, hey, I'm forgiven. We can live in condemnation. We can live in the past. We can think we're not good at relationship. We can think a lot of things about ourselves. I'm surprised at how many beautiful people I see in the world. They don't think they're worth a dime. And that's not humility. That's a false humility. Okay? But you can have a true heart. You can know who you are. You can actually, you can get up with confidence. And God can do that for you. But you've got to work on it with you. Amen. Are you listening to some today anyway? Good. You thought I was talking to you, didn't I? Big guy. I was. No, I'm just picking with you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Oh, yeah. I don't want to mess with him. He's bigger than I am. Here we go. My heart is my responsibility. I need to take care of my heart. Focus with me a little bit. Here we go. Bless your heart. How can I bless my heart? Why do I need to bless my heart? Why do I need to bless my heart, Pastor? Here's why. Because a heart can be troubled. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. That's why you need to bless your heart, because your heart can be in deep trouble. I need to bless my heart because my heart can get heavy. Heaviness in the heart of a man makes him stoop. But a good word makes it what? You know, people that just got so depressed, they got sick, and then those same people that got sick died. Say, you ever known people, their heart was so heavy, got so broken, they unplugged from life. And their heads started to hang. And it won't for long, they in the hospital. That's your heart. Not this pumping thing, but this thing we're talking about can affect the pumping thing. I don't understand it, but it's connected. A heart can be sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. When hope's out there and keeps getting put off and you can't never get you no hope, you get sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. To learn how to, how to take care of your heart, how to always have hope. Even when things are bad and it looks like hope is gone, it ain't. It ain't. You got to talk like that and think like that. A heart can be what? Wounded. For I'm poor, I'm needy. My heart is what? Wounded inside of me. How many have had one of those? <laughs> I mean, my hand's going up on every one of them. Have you noticed? Amen. My heart is smitten. It's withered like the grass so that I forgot to eat. People have been coming up to me lately. You gain in weight. Because I'm taking care of my heart. <laughs> but that, that taking care of your heart can get out of hand. <laughs> like last night, Kim and I, we uh, had supper at home with the kids, and I said, let's go to Publix. How many are like me? You go to Publix, get the ice cream, you open the ice cream for you, you get to the house. Yeah, yeah. I did that in Colorado. Oh, I'm that way with Raj, even when we were traveling. Hey, it was, I've got a problem. Last night, Kim and I, we go to Publix. But boy, I'm smart, because a lot of times I get the half gallon, I ain't got nothing to eat with it. That's hard. Just take that thing and stick it, or your, or your fingers, and it's hard. Anyway, but last night I said, we're going to take a bowl. I was smart. 
I took me a bowl and a spoon. And then she and I went down one of these roads and back in East Inglewood, back there in Gulf Cove somewhere, and we just parked and ate our ice cream. So sure, I'm getting heavy. Here we go. <laughs> I got to watch that. That's not smart sometimes. I'm sorry. Bluebell. Coconut fudge. It's a new it's a new one. Oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> I gotta quit. Hang on. A heart can be broken. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a what? Broken heart. It's not to say you're not going to get hurt, but to know that God's with you. Amen? Look at this one. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. Sometimes our heart needs to be broken over our actions. But you need to take care of your heart so you know when that's the case, when someone else is breaking your heart, but when you need to have a broken heart. See? I mean, there's something about this heart stuff. But my heart is my responsibility. I'm to keep my heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hear thou, my son, and be wise. Guide your what? Heart in the way. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will do what? See, that's the point. That's where we're trying to get you today and trying to get me today is to take care of our heart, to know how to deal with my heart so that I can draw that out of me when I need it. Because you need it all the time because out of it flows the issues of life. The physical heart pumps the blood. The rational, emotional, spiritual heart pumps me. I better be able to draw this stuff out. Bless your heart. How can I bless my heart? Say these things with me. Would you say it with me today? Say it out loud. I want a... Talk to yourself about that. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit inside of me. You'll never have a clean heart unless you want a clean heart. Okay? If you want to justify, have a dirty heart, you want to be evil, run your mouth, gossip, all that kind of mess, it'll never get fixed until you say to the Lord, I want a clean heart. Me. I want to take charge of me. I want a happy heart. Say that with me. I want a happy heart. A merry heart or a happy heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit's broken. Take care of your heart. Want a happy heart. Desire a happy heart. Seek for a happy heart. Don't be content by saying, well, that's just the way I am. I just frown all the time. That's the way I was raised. No, you're an excuse maker, and you're not taking care of your heart. Amen? Come on. A merry heart does good like a what? Medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bone. Some of you might ought to try this. Instead of taking so many meds, why don't you start trying to take care of your heart? Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't say you don't need your meds. But a lot of health could come from this. Say it with me. I want a... Unless you want it, you ain't getting it. The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart. Trust in Him. And I'm what? Helped. Therefore, my heart rejoices greatly with my song, and I'll praise Him. You mean even when bad things happen? Especially when bad things happen. Say it with me. I want a confident heart. Though a host should encamp against me, enemies come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be. Confidence. See the difference? Say, or do you want to live life chancing everybody in your life is just going to always treat you perfectly? Good luck with that is right. I want a what? You better bless your heart, guys. The law of his God is in his, and none of his steps shall what? When other people come against me or when relationship goes south or when, when bad things happen, does it mean I have to fall? No, it does not mean you have to fall. It does mean you're going to get hurt and you're going to feel it because that's your human. But you do not have to slide. You understand? Bad things happen, we go for the bottle. Bad things happen, we go for the pills. Bad things happen, we just give up on God. Bad things, and that's what we do, right? Just a sign. You're not taking care of your heart. I don't need God, you might think. 
Well, you do if you want to take care of your heart. See, that's where God goes, "Mm -hmm, I guess you need me now, don't you? He's a friend that sticks closer than a what? A brother. I'll never leave you, nor what? Hmm. Sounds like pretty good stuff. I want a what? One more time. I want a... My heart is fixed. Oh, God, my heart is fixed, and I'll sing and give you praise. Fix it on Him. Set it on Him. But also, God can fix your heart if you'll take the time. This is a real Valentine's Day, man. This is good stuff. My heart is my responsibility. Bless your heart. We're going to just end right here with a message. These four things. And I just saw them as I was writing the message. The heart is the receiving place of God's love. That's where you receive God's love. Look at what the Bible says. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man would some even dare to die. But look at this incredible verse. Say it with me. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet, Christ died for us. Have you received Christ into your heart? Into that pumping thing, preacher? No, into that thing that pumps you. Into your thoughts, into your emotions, into your spirit. Have you received the love of God? Into your, that is the place you catch it like a ball player. Throw it to me! That's where you catch it. And what we've been talking about. That's why a lot of people go to church their whole life and they never get it because they put it up here on a little list. And they never got it here. Does that make sense to you? It's the receiving place. If you've never received Christ's love into your heart, you need to do that today. That's the beginning place for you to take care of your heart. He's center at you having the wholeness and wellness that you need spiritually. You understand how I'm not making you feel bad? I'm not trying to put you down. You're going to hell. No, I'm trying to say this is how you can have a great life. You're listening to the difference, yes or no? Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, come on, praise the Lord. It's a good, t- it's a good thing. Come on. Number two, the heart is the dwelling place of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your what? By that you being rooted and grounded in love might be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. It's the dwelling place of Jesus your heart. Do you have Him there by faith? Can you face whatever you face and know I'm not alone? Not everybody can do this, and you shouldn't say, yes, you can, if you can't. Receive God into your heart today. You understand? Don't get the cart before the horse. But that's that's where He's going to dwell with you, and He's going to dwell there by faith. And that's going to give you everything you need to make it. The heart is the what? Working place. So it's the receiving place. It's the dwelling place of Jesus. It's the working place of the Holy Spirit. Now, He which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath what? Sealed us and given us the earnest or the down payment of Himself. And that is the Spirit of God in our what? In our hearts. That's the working place. When you receive God's love and Christ is dwelling in you by faith and you put your confidence in Him and no one else, then the Holy Spirit can start working in your heart. You understand? That's a hard concept to understand. Now unto Him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. How many of you went through something so hard you cannot believe you made it? Can I see your hand? (laughs) I can't believe I made it. That's insane. You can do great things exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. When Christ is in your heart and Holy Spirit is working in you. The last thing this morning, the heart is the what? It's the reigning place of the peace of God. And let the peace of God rule in your... 
to the which also you're called in one body, and be what? And thankful. Can you imagine you can go through hard things in life and your heart can be broken, heavy, hurt, whatever. The world's going crazy. And you can have peace. Wow. I guess that's the goal of taking care of your heart. That come what may, regardless of the situation, I can have peace in my heart. Amen? That's the goal. So those four things I saw from Scripture as I was reading. So my question is, have I, have I received God's love? Have I received God's love? You ought to ask yourself that. Have I received God's love in His Son, Jesus? Have I said, thank you for dying for me and caring for me? I'm putting my faith and trust in you. Come into my life. Have I received God's love in my heart, not just in my brain? Stop saying, well, I've been church since I was like three. Well, you grow up and mess happens. And you need a little something more than what happened at three. Are you truly born again? If you died today, do you know you'd go to heaven? Is Christ yours and you're, you're His? Do you know that? Receive that. Number two, am I allowing Jesus Christ to live through me? As I live my life, is Jesus living life with me? It's funny now. I'll, I'll just I'll be doing things and I'll be like, you know, thank you, Jesus. Like He's with me. Well, He is. By faith. Amen? Somebody said something. I, I was the other day somewhere, and I told some kid, I'll knock you out. He said, I don't think you can knock you out. It was Schulte on a football team. Of course, you and I both know I can. But anyway, but uh, he said, well, I don't think so. I said, well, me and Jesus can. He said, well, now maybe you and Jesus can. That's the point. When you take care of your heart, you and Jesus can. Amen? You can't. You and Jesus can. Is He working in your life? Or is He in your life dwelling? Is the Holy Spirit working in your life? Are you allowing Him to work in your life? And do in your life and work through you? And then finally, is God reigning in my heart? Do I have peace? Am I confident? Am I content? Am I not playing the game anymore? I'm just being real now. How about that? My heart is my responsibility. Can you say it real loud for me? One, two, three. Bless your... Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give thanks for His Word today. Amen. Praise the Lord.